Samo's natural waters are special. Something goes in there, comes out different. We often wonder why, but after generations and generations, I'm telling you, it has always been that way. Of course, things don't always turn out the way you expect. <laughs> <laughs> Bo's complaining, right? Because these waters are not just special. They make everything better. As for me, this is my natural. Natural Sambo water. The taste of nature in a bottle. A warm welcome to our Pacific participants. Welcome to beautiful Sambo. I'm Maeva, the CEO for the Ministry of Finance in Samoa, and I'll be your master of ceremony for this opening, um, official opening of the program. We give thanks to the Lord Almighty for his guidance and grace in bringing us together here today. So as per usual practice of the Pacific, we will start the opening ceremony with a prayer service. I now call upon Reverend Boasa Tobia for our morning devotion. So my name is Tobia
let us worship God. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, creator and sustainer of life, we have gathered here this morning to begin our discussions on this very important problem. But before we commence, we ask for your guidance and direction. For without you in our lives, we are meaningless. Therefore, we ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit to bless and anoint us, so that our worship this morning brings glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning comes to us from the New Testament. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6. I shall read responsibly from verse 1 to verse 4. Let us hear the word of God. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward for your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues in the streets, so that they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your arms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will be you. May the Spirit of the Lord enlighten unto us the deeper meaning of His most holy word, and unto Him be all honor and praise, now and forevermore. Amen. I have chosen as the main text for our sermon this morning, Part of verse 3, I shall read. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. The theme for today and our Bible reading again, according to the International Bible Dictionary, is act discreetly. Act discreetly or acting wisely. In all the things we do, including our daily chores, we always use both hands, the left and the right, to our satisfaction. Therefore, it is impossible to separate our hands from each other. In fact, God designed our physique and our hands for one to assist the other. Like I said, it is difficult to separate one from the other. On the other hand, both hands is operated and coordinated by the single mind and brain we all have. So why did Jesus give us such a difficult instruction? <coughs> when you give arms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing. Giving arms or lending a helping hand, especially to those in need, is a just and sensible thing to do. But the problem with our generous acts always tempts us to take the credit and praises, therefore forgetting and undermining our God. So the reason why Jesus' words are so important a metaphorical phrase, a proverbial phrase. So when we utilize and see both hands in our generous acts, we must always rethink, think twice. Who will take the credit? Is it us or our God? The difficulty of separating one hand from the other is like an alarm for us to act wisely. Listen to the wise words of our Lord. Do not let your left what your right is doing. The left shall pretend it knows nothing. But most paramount is the right hand. 
symbolizing the correct and right action to take. Honorable members and delegates of this forum, such is the message from the Gospel this morning. Every day we are faced with problems and difficulties for which we are supposed to come up with decisions. Today's message is for us to always do the right one. So the reason to act discreetly. For our God is a righteous God, the absolute truth and supreme righteousness. Therefore, Him alone deserves all honor and graces. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Alpha and Omega, protector and provider of all nations, today was attentive to our purposes, but you alone have made it a reality. Our brothers and sisters traveling from afar, Together we praise and glorify your holy name. Your presence brings meaning and purposes to our lives. <coughs> In the nearest hour we shall begin our discussions, thus for doing the right and just for our island nations. Teach us, Lord, guide us to become better servants to our people. But most vital and importantly is for us to do the right for thus is your will, and glorify your holy name. May peace and love of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us, and all God's children in the world, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend, for the word of grace and blessings upon our two-day regional workshop. May God continue to bless you and the good work you are doing in this day. Next on our agenda is the opening remarks from the Asian Development Bank as the main sponsor of this regional workshop. The bank is represented in country by the Pacific Sub-Regional Director, Mr. Aaron Clayton. However, we will hear a recorded message from Bruno Carrasco, the Director General for Sustainable Development and Climate Change. Mr. Carrasco joined the bank some 25 years ago that's a lot of experience, and have served various countries across the regional departments. He leads the ADP's wide knowledge, innovation, policies, and strategies in all thematic and sector operation areas, including ensuring compliance with the environment and social safeguards. Let us now hear the recorded message from the Director General of the Asian Development Bank. Honorable Toyole Sulu Sulu, Cedric Moses Salesa Schuster, Minister of Natural Resources and Environment and Co-Chair of the Natural Energy Coordination Committee, Samoa. Honorable Eugene Amor, ADB Governor and Secretary of Department of Finance and Administration, Federated States of Micronesia. Respected ADB alternate governors, Saulie Titi Maeva Betham by Chief Executive Officer, Ministry of Finance, Samoa and Garth Henderson, Financial Secretary, Ministry of Finance and Economic Management, Cook Islands. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you in Samoa. Although I'm not able to join you in person, I am nonetheless delighted to provide my opening remarks virtually to this very important regional workshop on carbon markets that ADB is organizing for its developing member countries in the Pacific. As many of us are aware, putting a price on carbon is an integral element of the broader climate policy architecture. Carbon pricing can help towards redirecting investments into green recovery and as revenue generating instruments 
help fill the financing gap for development and growth. Implementing carbon pricing and driving a low carbon transition is particularly important for our region, as we all know that the fight against climate change will be won or lost in Asia and the Pacific. Well-designed use of carbon pricing can not only help countries reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and achieve targets of the nationally determined contributions cost-effectively, but also provide additional benefits, including generating revenue, which can be channeled towards enhancing climate adaptation and resilience. In the Pacific region, international carbon markets, such as those under Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, are a potentially powerful instrument for putting a price on carbon and mobilizing carbon finance. International carbon markets can help create an influx of much needed carbon finance and promote the diffusion of advanced low carbon technologies. Alongside the interest in Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, we are also seeing a growing demand for a transparent, verifiable, and robust voluntary carbon market to help meet our overall climate goals, and the Pacific countries can play a key role in helping fulfill this demand. I am happy to note that several of the developing member countries of the Pacific already have experience of participating in international carbon markets, such as the Clean Development Mechanism, or CDM, under the Kyoto Protocol, the Joint Credit Mechanism, or JCM, initiated by the Government of Japan, which is largely regarded as the forerunner under Article 6.2 of the Paris Agreement and under the Voluntary Carbon Market. For example, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, and Vanuatu have hosted CDM projects, and Palau and Papua New Guinea are partner countries for the JCM. This experience has created expertise and know-how in carbon market governance, methodological approaches, and project development that is relevant to operationalizing emerging international carbon markets under Article 6 of the Paris Agreement and the Voluntary Carbon Market. It is also directly transferable across the region. Existing experience, knowledge, and institutional capacity represent a resource that is important for the region to harness. While the opportunities are plentiful, let me also highlight that there are challenges, as carbon markets are not easy to administer. Design considerations and facilitating policy frameworks are very important. Policymakers, therefore, need to first develop a better understanding of how they wish to utilize carbon markets for achieving their national climate ambitions. And, more importantly, they need technical expertise to make informed choices on what instruments would work better depending on their national priorities, preferences, and circumstances. It is therefore key to build the necessary policy framework, institutional and human capacity, as well as building a consensus among domestic stakeholders to ensure their engagement in the design and implementation of carbon markets. This workshop is very timely as COP27 provided important guidance for operationalizing the Article 6 rules that were finalized at COP26. Article 6 carbon markets are just emerging. Pacific countries have the possibility to be first movers in these markets, and it is critical to build institutional readiness accordingly. I am happy to note that Vanuatu, for example, has taken early action to operationalize Article 6 of the Paris Agreement by signing a bilateral agreement with Switzerland on climate change cooperation under Article 6.2. We hope that this will create momentum that can be scaled throughout the Pacific, contributing to our region benefiting from the carbon market. We at ADB are committed to supporting our Pacific development member countries in using carbon markets as part of their climate policy architecture for promoting green recovery and growth and to meeting the growing financial and development challenges amidst a climate crisis. ADB has a long-standing engagement with carbon markets and has been providing technical capacity building and carbon finance to support greenhouse gas mitigation activities across the region. Our Article 6 support facility, or A6SF, provides technical capacity building and policy development support across our development countries. It helps these DMCs to prepare uh, to participate in the new carbon markets and enhance their ability to mobilize all important carbon finance through the emerging international carbon markets. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by showing you of our continued engagement and all possible support for your efforts in securing carbon finance through international carbon markets. We will remain steadfast in this endeavor and are hopeful that our development member countries in the Pacific will build on this growing momentum for the development of international carbon markets and include carbon markets in their broader climate policy architecture moving forward. Once again, I thank you for your participation and I wish you a lovely stay in this beautiful island nation of Samoa. I look forward to continued cooperation. Thank you, uh, Director General, for the opening remarks, and also uh, Mr. Batten for his country presence. We hope this will be an annual commitment from the Asian Development Bank in hosting this workshop uh, for capacity development in carbon credits. I want to make special acknowledgement of the presence of Mr. VK, who actually uh, did a two-hour uh, session uh, with the Samoan Tower of Dedication in the annual meetings that resulted in this workshop. Another round of applause for Amy Bates. <laughs> okay, let me now invite the representative of the government of Samoa as the host country for the keynote address. This will be delivered by the Honorable uh, Minister of Resources, Natural Resources and Environment true environmentalist in heart, at heart and a strong advocate of climate change actions, who is also the current co-chair of the National Energy Coordinating Committee for Samoa, as well as the Minister of Tourism. Now, if you want to so soon, you have your money on one of Samoa too.
The technical capacity provided through this workshop can assist us in all in, us, in utilizing carbon markets to catalyze the inflows of international carbon finance and incentivize the diffusion of advanced low carbon technologies. The initiative came about following an initial meeting between Samoa's delegation and the ADB carbon credit specialists during the ADB annual meetings in Manila last September. In this respect, I acknowledge the role of the Ministry, Samoa Ministry of Finance in securing this workshop to be held in Samoa, allowing more local participation. Special acknowledgments to the Asian Development Bank for all the technical preparation and financial support for this workshop. We look forward to this annual commitment by ADB. This initiative comes in a timely manner for Samoa, especially following the COP26 and COP27, in which the voices of AUS were prominent in the completion endorsements of the Paris Agreement rule, the Glasgow Climate Pact, and the Samoa Shape Implementation Plan. Nationally, we are completing our third national GHC emission stock take. We have completed and published our low carbon development strategy and our second national determination contribution to reduce emissions. Couple this with our programs to meet the 30 by 30 targets of protected areas, both terrestrial and marine ecosystems, and our carbon offset programs through the 3 million tree planting national program, all contributing to the implementation of the Kumin Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. All these will hopefully go deeper than our second NDC goals to decrease our emissions while incre increasing our carbon stock as an emission in our pathway for the development of Samoa. This ultimately means more carbon credits available for trading to finance our national developments for CDM projects, as well as providing a good financial injection into our customary landowners who will be responsible for managing the majority of our biodiversity conservation programs. I hope the two-day workshop will inspire innovative thinking and facilitate dialogue amongst policymakers of the Pacific on how we can take advantage of carbon markets in order to strategically contribute towards meeting our regional and international climate change commitments. I wish you all the best in your deliberations and hope you find time to enjoy the rainy, beautiful summer. And now we clear this first regional, Pacific Regional Workshop on Carbon Credits officially open. So if you all may have here.
whainga tai a oe ona tau saa Elisa Tupe Moma Liu, whai poiponga a onga le whanau, ta a vale, po o se whare fou. Here's a chau! Maua lo na kamba, kwa vili mea ngei lewa maua. Kope kope mangua le kapungia, kope re rope maua ngei. A fio mai nei loe le Federal Pacific Finance, mo so so mana onga tau Tupe Papi. Oi le 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 le! Saka kou le whainga luenga. Federal Pacific Finance, serving sa mo's financial needs. A lunch recruitment were based in New Zealand and were 100% owned and operated by a Samoan family. We're here to recruit people, give the opportunity to people for full-time work in New Zealand as a skilled worker, um, so trades, carpenter, mechanic, or anyone who's successful with the quota to be able to come over to New Zealand. Hey. Kalai lor me afai se, lewa madiu mat koi inga bolai lor pofe ama use pupi. Sema, awak ke poli? Cao wan file lor insur. Asyik yo kaya wan ba iPhone file file sa ulung. Sema sa iya ulung nak cerita fengar benga. Marfan masih awak kama lah file lor insur. Ah, ke poli? Cekum benga, kumai. San, oh mai. Ola ese kala. Olga sa file lor insur koi inga awak ni sa. Ngah lor menga media koi tempo. Ebi li sa iya file lor insur koi inga. Se yo la kaya o usuay o ofisa ma abel pepa madil. O la win siwa e a wala ise te unga tupe mole lo mana i manuia. E mole pui pui nga tau tupe o lo soy fua. E tua i ai le fa nao e tina por te mao le ainga. Ma i ma fai o na te unu noa tu mo so o se ma fua anga i te fina ngalo i ai. A le mo fai lo sa kua kua ko fa amakan. Tina, o ke polo le mo fai fai le lo mo se wala. E le si lo la se kamasu. Samoa Life, le insiwa mo tangata nuu o Samoa. Thank you.